get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See looks like a beach if you find the same And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. I'm here with Alex Glenn, partnerprograms.io. Before I formally introduce Alex, I like to, Alex, I always like to mention other episodes people should check out. Um, a big shout out to Ian Garlic, um, who introduced us. And Ian, uh, you know, has an amazing site, video case stories and story crews. You can check it out. Um, we actually... I don't have many people on my podcast more than once, but Ian is a special guy. We just did one on goal setting. Um, and Jason Swink is another one must check out. I had him on twice. I know Alex knows Jason Swink, uh, who is uh, a master in agencies. So he's got an amazing group of agency owners and um, check out the episode where we talked about how they're buying agencies actually. So that and much more on inspiredinsider.com. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Rise25. At Rise25, we help businesses give to and connect to their dream 100 relationships. It's almost sound like partner programs dial, but it's not. But we will we'll talk about that. But, you know, we help you give to and connect your dream 100 relationships. And we do that by helping you run your podcast. Um, for me, and I know for Alex, the number one thing in our lives are relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give them to my best relationships. And I found no better way to do that than to profile the people and the companies I admire on my podcast over the past decade. So if you've thought about starting a podcast, you should. I think if you have a business, you should have a podcast, period. Uh, and that's before, Alex, even it was self-serving that I, you know, obviously we help people and are, are an easy button to do that. But um, if you have questions, you can go to rise25.com or email us support at rise25media.com. Both John and I have been podcasting for over a decade. So we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay. Today we have Alex Glenn's founder of partnerprograms.io and also partnerhub.app. And he's former digital marketing agency operator, VP of growth and tech. So he kind of takes the agency side, the tech side, and it has a baby. And he, so he built a platform and community to help both sides of channel partnerships to succeed. Alex, thanks for joining me. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. So I want to start there, actually, just tell people a little bit more about what partnerprograms.io is and partnerhub.app. Yeah, yeah. So partnerprograms.io started as a service business uh, matchmaking and creating relationships between mainly digital agencies and tech companies, SaaS, right? Uh, it's grown quite significantly since uh, that idea first began a couple of years ago. And today we support two communities, one for just digital agencies that are looking to meet one another, uh, learn strategies, tactics, uh, receive uh, ephemeral and curated offers from these tech companies, as well as uh, participate in these closed group workshops. Um, that community has grown significantly as well. And then we launched a tech version of that community. So just technology companies that want to connect, learn from one another, and be involved in these unique types of trainings and workshops where we actually bring in digital agencies that partner and partner successfully and teach these tech companies from the horse's mouth, so to speak. So we want to make sure that they understand the persona very well, and they can work um, in a way that these agencies appreciate and want to reciprocate. So that's the true partnership meaning. Um, next to that is a podcast of our own called Make Them Famous, the Partner Enablement Podcast, a uh, unique format where we interview two people on either side of the partnerships equation to find out what's working, why it's working, what they do week to week to make it work. And then uh, finally, we have been developing an app for the last seven months called Partner Hub. This app is V1 right now. We're about to release version 1.2 today. Uh, it's where everything happens. So now if either side of our community want to partner and they want to effectively manage the partnership, they have a place to find, vet, and deploy, and then manage tech or agency partnerships in one place. So it's kind of like Tinder for tech and agencies. No, it is very much you swipe, like that. swipe right if you want a partner. 
You don't swipe, uh, oh, but yeah. you do open up profiles. Yeah. Uh, they are pre-curated to match your overlapping target customer profile. Uh, so you both sell to the same customer profile. You will be introduced and then you can accept them, which we call deploy. Uh, and then you can deny them or you can take a break and uh, snooze it. And then once you've accepted and you both are connected, you guys are managing uh, different projects together. You guys are communicating, tasking, uh, chat, document share, typical project management type stuff. Uh, but it's got the marketplace behind it, the directory behind it. So we're constantly making new introductions and um, facilitating these relationships. So it's it's a uh, it's really great next step for us, really necessary next step for us because our ecosystem have been asking for this for a long time. So we're really excited to uh, to release that. Yeah, I mean, partnerships and, you know, the strategic partnerships are, I think, one of the most leveraged things people can do. And I know you have some, even when I was looking at partnerprograms.l, there's trainings and there's, there's things. Are there, um, what are some of the popular ones on the website? Because I see, you know, there's a variety of trainings there. I think Jason Swank even does one as well. Yeah. Yeah, Swank's been in a couple times, uh, M and A, uh, and he does a really great one on raising prices as well. Um, we try to be unique and different in in a lot of ways uh, because these days, I mean, digital agencies are being pulled right and left to different communities. There's a new community opening up every day, um, and in my experience with communities, they've been very, uh, very fluffy. I guess you could say it's been very. You know, it's 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 a lot of talk. It's a lot of self promotions. It's a lot of just resource posts uh, that you know are article format, not very valuable, or someone talking about something they're doing that's that's just wanting you to go and give them some more attention. So we created this community to be all value, all actionable stuff all day long. Uh, so every Friday we post a roundup of co-marketing uh, backlink offers from our tech companies. These are major brands that want to pull these agencies into the blog and in the newsletter. And we wrap those up and post them every Friday. We have weekly workshops. Learning new services is a big thing for 2022 for us. So we have this thing called New Revenue Wednesdays, where you will learn how to set up, sell, and support a new service for your client. So if you're currently selling HubSpot implementation, but you don't sell this next step, which is plugging it into here and supporting something else. We're going to show you how to do it. We're going to make you um, give you the introductions to get that set up and give you all the resources to make that effective. And then on the flip side, on the tech side, we do the same thing. So workshops weekly, uh, we post offers uh, from different tech companies to either hire or look for new types of relationships. And uh, we have this thing called the Partner Programs Accelerator. That's very popular where tech teams can learn in about 12 courses how they can set up a uh, digital agency focused partner program. And uh, yeah, a bunch of uh, live events probably coming back. We stopped doing those, obviously, in 2019. But we had some live events that uh, we were planning that could get pushed to 2022. So look out for those. And uh, yeah, talk about the stuff. talk about that for the backlink thing. That that's a cool way of, um, you know, that's high value to the tech companies who want great content. It's high value to the agencies. Um, talk about that for a second. The backlink, what you were saying. Yeah, I think it's important, and this is part of the strategy of partnering. I think in general, it's like you want to give. A couple times before you ask, you know, that old Gary Vaynerchuk, jab, jab, right hook strategy. So you want to give, give, and then ask. Um, and also you want to see if you work well together, see if you communicate well together, see if you like each other, you know? Um, and then the other thing is you want to see if your audiences respond well to whatever the other person is trying to say, right? Uh, that should be the basis of a good expert consulting implementation type partnership. If you're just wanting affiliates, obviously you can find anybody with a ranking video and uh, something and, and ask them to put your link in there and give them commission. But what, what we talk about is the true partnership. You and I are in a joint venture. We're working together to get something accomplished, usually revenue deals, right? So in that world, 
you think about like from a partnerships perspective, from the partner manager, partner team on the tech side, they have this list of incentives that they can use to enable agencies that are already in the program to do more. Those are typically commissions, uh, but product-based incentives, marketing-based incentives. But when you're starting the relationship and say, I didn't know you and you didn't know me and I'm a tech company and I want you to partner with me. Instead of me knocking on your door and saying, Jeremy, this is my product. It's great. We've got all these reviews and case studies and people are loving it. Would you sell my product to your customers, to your clients? Would you push my product to your clients? <clears throat> You'd probably say no uh, immediately and, or just not say anything at all. But if I came to you and said, Jeremy, I love what you're doing. Your podcast seems awesome. You're a thought leader in this space. And I think my audience would really appreciate what you're trying to say. Would you write a guest post for my blog? And I'll push that out to my 50,000 monthly unique visitors. I'll put that in my newsletter that has 3,000 opt-ins or whatever. I'll put that in, or maybe even come to my podcast if I have one and I'll interview you and start the relationship that way. And then I've given you a backlink, which is great. You know, agencies out there, many of them have low domain authority and they need SEO, they need traffic, they need leads like any, any other business. So getting backlinks from these really awesome tech companies is huge for them. It really helps them. Uh, not only that, their face showing up in your newsletter, in your blog is really great for their thought leadership. These guys and girls are CEOs and they need to maintain their thought leadership in their space because if a potential client is looking at them versus the next agency and someone's appearing all over the place and showing that they really know the subject, that person's going to get that deal and be able to raise their prices and be able to succeed. So you're giving them all that. And it's really not much off of your back. You know, you're not spending a lot of time. You're not spending a lot of energy and effort. And they're really appreciative. And if they're really appreciative, when they're on that next call with that client, they're going to think about you. They're going to think about your solution. They're going to want to give back. It's just human nature. So if you do that a couple of times, build a relationship that way, you'll, fi you'll find out all those important things you need to find out about how you work together. You'll give them that immediate reciprocity. They're going to want to reciprocate right off the bat. And um, the relationship is, has a solid foundation to grow from. Love it. And we're going to dig into some examples, um, Alex, but um, I want to hear, you know, one of the big pain points I think you solve is if I am a partner manager of a company, um, I have to basically go out and it's so fragmented. I have to go out on LinkedIn. I have to go out on all these platforms. There's not somewhere where I can go, okay, these people are also interested in partnering and um, have this ecosystem, right? Yeah. Um, and from the partner manager side, Okay, because some people want to implement a partner program. They don't know how, they don't know where to start. At what point do you hire uh, a partner manager? Oh, yeah, this is a tough question uh, that uh, comes up a lot. Uh, partner manager, and also at what point do you hire uh, that first partner marketing manager? Is that, that next question we get a lot? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, if you're a tech company and you want to do partnerships, uh, highly advise against just hiring a partner manager and, and, and telling them to go, go forth and, and, and find <laughs> success. Good luck. All right. That is also what we advise those new partner managers not to do. Don't just jump into a role where you're going to be expected to create something out of nothing and um, have these crazy uh, first year goals, usually revenue goals, you're getting in a position where it's it fails so many mm -hmm. times. And it's sad because I, I have these clients, these companies that have these partner managers, they come to us immediately because they don't know what to do and they need support and then they need the audience and all this stuff. And the uh, nine times out of 10, the board of directors and the CEO and the CRO have fa the false expectations, these crazy crazy ideas for what success is in a partner program. And usually that's around that revenue number. So they get these crazy mm -hmm. goals and uh, they're set up for failure. So my suggestion for these tech companies that want to see if partnerships is something they should get into and launch and deploy inside of their company. The first step is to look inside your data, inside your user accounts and see if your users are inviting any third parties to 
co-admin or members or users, whatever, of their accounts inside your solution, if you're a tech company, if you're a SaaS, look at the data. Yeah, if you, they're already if using happening. it. Yeah, if you see this happening a lot, that's a good indicator that, okay, well, let's find out who these agencies are and let's let's go and, and, and talk to them. The other way you can do that is enable your sales team and your CS team using a, a CRM field to ask on calls who are you working with to get stuff done on the marketing side, on the implementation side, on the development side? Do you have an agency? If you do, you know, we are looking at starting an agency program. We're willing to reach out and train, enable, and give them a bunch of incentives. Do you mind if I have their name and put that name in a field in Salesforce? And then look at all the data, figure out if you have these use cases going on. That's step number one. Step number two is for somebody that's already on the team that already has a job. Uh, to give them an incentive, a goal, um, something, a reason to you know stop doing what they're doing now and do this for a little bit, or at least filter this in. Usually, a head of marketing or or even a CRO. I've oftentimes the CEO, if the company has grown fast, the CEO's role actually shrinks when the company's getting larger. People don't fully understand that, but if the company is getting to the point where they've raised a couple of rounds, the CEO's role oftentimes has become very small and they have, they have hours in the day. CEOs are the best people to lead partnerships. So have your CEO or you as the CEO start talking to these consultants, these agencies, these people that you know are talking to your customers. Be that driver of the partnership. Uh, have the conversations, make it really one-to-one, open yourself up to say, hey, we've got all this stuff going on. We've got our own podcast. We've got a newsletter. We've got a blog. We're big on social. And just say, hey, what can we do together You know, with each one of these consultants? Pick out some that you really like from the brand side that seem to have a lot of potential customers of yours or users of yours as customers and reach out to them and just open yourself up to doing whatever they like to do. Now, form these really ad hoc, one-to-one custom relationships with these agencies and then say, okay, well, uh, is this something that has a sizable TAM? You know, are there a lot more agencies like this that are out there? Then if yes, go and find them. Enrich data sets of these agencies. Look at how many there are. Look at the profiles. And then when you have a couple case studies or use cases, or just at least some examples of what you're doing with these other partners. So say you did 20 of those and you created content with all 20, you did stuff together, wrap all that up, wrap up the data, and then go to a partner manager that you want to hire and say, here's what we did. Here's the data that we think we can go after. Uh, We have no revenue expectations for the first six months. We want you to be free to you know, run into walls and try different stuff and see what you can get done. Uh, And then give them the opportunity to raise their hand and say, that's something I think I can sink my teeth into and and really find success with. But now the CEO also knows how hard it was to do. Because the other thing about partnerships that most teams don't understand is that your sales team is selling your product and the product is good or bad. So your sales team's typically only as good as your product, right? The marketing team is marketing the product and the product team is building the product. But the partnership team and the engineering team are building the product. But the partnership team has to create their own product to sell. They're not selling the product anymore. They're selling what's called a partnership, which means they have to build whatever that is. Then they have to build a sales strategy around it Oh, and they have to market that strategy as well. And they typically don't have any help early on, at least. They typically don't get much help from the sales and marketing team. So they're off on their own island, building their own product, creating their own go-to-market strategy. So hiring one person and giving them crazy, stressful goals around revenue, and then pushing them off on that island and saying, go find success you can see where that that kind of goes wrong. So it's good if the CEO knows how difficult it was to do that, but has already paved the way and then find someone that he knows or she knows can go off and and, and have success and then hire them. I'm going to dig a little deeper into that. And a couple of things I really love what you said is uh, a phrase 
what can we do together? It's like a very collaborative statement. It allows a brainstorming session and it's not like a one-sided thing where here's what we do, here's what we can offer. It, I love what you said there. And then the second is the low-hanging fruit, which is these people are already in your database. You're already interacting with them or they're adjacent to the people you're already interacting with. And that's, again, what I love about a podcast. People come to me and go, Jeremy, I don't even know who to have in my podcast. I'm like, well, look in your cell phone. I mean, they're there or your email. You don't have to like rack your brain. The people you're closest with um, are the greatest people, right? We don't, I mean, we often go and make it really difficult on ourselves to go the coldest of cold. I want this influencer, Alex Glenn. I don't know. Well, just look in yourself and look in your email and see who you do know. And people have amazing networks. They don't even realize. So I love both of those things. I want to dig in to the new product. Okay. So to make sure I'm understanding it correctly, uh, correctly. So when I think of, and you listed a few so far of people also are thinking, well, what do I do? What are partner options? What are, you know, you listed, you could partner through a podcast, having on the podcast, you partner through an article, a newsletter, a webinar. So I'd love to hear. So when you say new product, they're coming up with this new product. Is that what you're referring to? They have to come up with, or is that more go-to-market strategy? Would the new product be, hey, Alex, like we're doing this webinar and then finding the perfect fit for the webinar to promote? Is that what you're referring to? Uh, yeah. So uh, when I say they have to create something new, yeah. if you're referring to that last part of that last yeah. question, that last answer, um, the creation of something new is the partnership in itself. They, they're not there to sell a product. You have to remove your product from the equation right. altogether in a partner program. Yeah. Uh, you have to come to the individual with, hey, we have stuff going on that could potentially make you famous, put you in front of a bunch of people. Um, and also we have a bunch of support and training to help you create a new service line, a new revenue stream for your agency. Uh, none of that was related to the product. That's all yeah. hey, business, new traffic and leads. We co-market with our partners. We co-sell with our partners. Uh, we are truly partnering with you. Uh, yes, the product is over there and it's the back of it, but, um, it's really about what you and I can do for one another mm -hmm. to win new business. That's that. But then once you're in an activity together, it's like, well, what can we do that's separate from the product, right? I think too many partner teams and tech teams in general think it's all based around the product and it's not. You guys can you know, create a course together. You can create a mini podcast together, a micro podcast together. You can obviously do a bunch of thought leadership content together. That's always great. And I think CEOs and CROs don't understand this and it, it causes some problems, but you know, the mandate on marketing for many teams, the marketing department um, don't include many agencies in their content, many outsiders in general. They don't think it's valuable. They want to focus on their content agenda. They've got a huge article they want to publish that focuses on that keyword and they want to get that done and get the next one done and keep growing traffic. Uh, but the main thing that I think these teams forget is they're dealing with experts in a subject matter. And these companies have partners or they don't have partners, but their users have agencies. They have contracts with agencies that are thought leaders. They're experts. They're subject matter experts in getting something done around your product. So your product may fit in the middle, but before your product, there's a bunch of strategy that has to happen. And after your product, there's a bunch of strategy that has to happen. And your CS team and your marketing team aren't the ones to talk about yeah. this. They don't know that. Yeah. But an agency that has to know where your product fits in and what they need to make sure it's yeah. full funnel and, and it's successful, they're the ones that can talk about it. So you invite one of those agencies to talk about how they do X, Y, Z at the top of the funnel or at the bottom of the funnel before or after your product. Now you're giving the people reading your blog, the potential users of your product, the traffic, you're giving them the how and the why and the what around your product, you know, and it's not coming from you. It's coming from somebody oh. that is a trusted, unbiased third party expert. So I don't think enough marketing teams do this 
But there's a different positioning. I well. yeah, totally. I yeah, I mean, there's different positioning. Someone else is saying else Glenn is the best thing since sliced bread, and as opposed to you saying it. And like you mentioned, there's that execution and implementation piece. And and I I am totally agree with everything you're saying. One plus one equals ten. So I think people miss the boat. It's like well those people also have their own audience and followers as well. And obviously if you feature them, they're going to promote it as like, look, I'm the expert on this blog. So there's a lot of different positives besides even the one that you mentioned, which is the expert content, right? It's going to benefit um, ultimately that company because they're going to get more eyeballs on it as well. Um, so, so really they're selling a, revenue stream and they're selling a give. I mean, really you're selling a give, like let's give to, you know, whatever that give is. And you mentioned the podcast article, newsletter, webinar, course, content. Are there any other things that you found have worked that or are unique as far as types of partner options, how people partner together? Yeah. And I'd, I'd say the answer to that is the product team, uh, the products and uh, the website team. So get with your product team, whoever's owning the website, and come up with partner sourced uh, areas of the site, uh, templates, resource libraries. Uh, HubSpot does this really well. They have a resource library that's just white papers and ebooks mm. sourced from their digital agency partners. So as a partner of HubSpot, if you have an ebook, you're free to submit it to that library. And then HubSpot does their magic and it ranks. It gets a lot of traffic. So now as a partner of HubSpot, I'm getting leads from people that are downloading my ebook from their resource library. That's an awesome way to bring partners closer to your funnel. Another way is on the same token is a partner sourced uh, a category or, or, or blog column. Sorry. So one of our clients does this really well. They created a Tuesday column in their blog that has a different hash, you know, there's a different um, uh, permalink uh, than the typical blog. So it'd be forward slash partner stories, forward slash X, Y, Z. And every Tuesday, they bring in a partner to do some thought leadership content. So how this top digital agency expert does CRO on top of Shopify or whatever. Uh, and they do that every Tuesday. Um, another one that takes a little more work that's related to product is well, if you have templates that are created from your product, templates or uh, workflows, I would say, is an easier one. So your product fits into a workflow or your product can be customized. Well, ask your agencies what they're doing with your product and if they would mind sharing that with your audience. So how this top digital agency uses your product in blank way, and then you articulate that in a formatted landing page. So not a blog post. We're not talking about an article. Articles can sometimes have a little bit of sign blindedness for the readers because if you have an article, it's it's looks biased from the gate. If it's on your site and it's an article, you immediately get that biased feel. Further, if you create a case study, ah, case studies are losing their value left, right, and center. It's like, yeah, we know you're great. You're going to find someone. You may even pay them to do this case study. Great. Okay. But what tech teams, I think, don't do enough is to look into their help desk and say, oh, well, here is a very detailed tutorial how to connect my tool to this other top platform. Look at that. And then go to your agencies and say, hey, is that, are any of you doing this? Are, you, are any of you connecting this integration and then doing stuff on top of that? Well, what we'd like to do is create these awesome landing pages on our site. We're going to house those in a directory of use cases. And we're going to invite our agencies to publish those use cases. And you give us these details. So make it a form, you know, Airtable or Google Forms or Typeform or whatever. Have the agency fill out the form with screenshots of what they're doing. And anybody that submits one of those, you create one of these profiles and it has the agency's name, the agency's logo, agency website, agency LinkedIn, agency Twitter. And then in the middle, in the body of the profile, it has what they do with your product. And then you have a tile-based 
directory of use cases for your product, which is super valuable for traffic and conversions. And that is all sourced from agencies and consultants Mm -hmm. that are doing really great stuff with your product. Uh, Not enough tech teams do that either. And it's so valuable. Airtable has their Airtable universe. HubSpot has their their CMS templates that are partner sourced. You know, Webflow does the same thing. They have their templates. WordPress, of course, big example. It's big in the CMS world, but not enough other types of companies are doing it. And I'll shout out to Databox and Pete Caputa, who founded HubSpot's partner program. He built uh, Databox's uh, partner funnel to be find a partner, directory of partners, then you open up that partner and you go to their profile. And then below their profile, you see, and I'll just show you the funnel real quick on screen because it's super important that tech teams see how they do this. The data box, go to their website. Partners are in the header. They've got find a partner in the header of their website. That's so rare, super important. Mm. Uh, and it's so good for them. Uh, so you go to one of their agencies, big B2B agency impact. You see their logo, their name, their website, their Twitter, what they do and what they are experts in. Then below that, templates by impact. Click on one of these templates, Google Analytics, audience overview, template created by impact. And I can review it preview it, and I can get this for free. I Mm. click on that and I onboard into Databox with this template that is already built to do what I need Databox to do for me. And it's built by an expert agency. And of course, I'm going to want to maybe reach out to that agency and say, hey, what else can you do for me? Yeah, totally. And I would love for you to help me with other stuff related to that that aspect. And they have 9,071 downloads of this template. That's 9,000 leads for impact. That's incredible. If you can do this with your partners, oh my God, you're going to bring them so close. And the the other side of that, which is a whole nother podcast is imagine what this does for the product team, how much information and insight. If you implement this activity, you're going to get so much product information because they're going to want to obviously, you know, showcase how how much they can do and they're going to want your product to do really great things. And you're going to have all these ideas flowing. It's going to be awesome. I mean, it also leapfrogs the journey for the person using it because it's like, it's already helping them implement it. So, you know, that's probably why people churn. They're not even using it. And what I love about, and there's a lot to unpack with what you just said. So I'm going to, I think other people should have just re-listen to what you just said, because there's so much so many gold nuggets there in the templates, but you also are crowdsourcing this. So you're not having to create it. So it's not stress on your team. You have experts doing it and you don't have to create any of it. I mean, you create a place for people to get it. Are there any other companies that you see are good at doing this? I remember, I don't remember if, if it was lead pages or someone was like taking, people were sharing their high converting landing pages and then people couldn't see them and deploy them as a template. Yeah. Uh, that's, it's genius. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I'm wondering if Unbounce, one of our companies does something like that. Uh, I can't say that they do or not, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think all the CMSs that are big do it really well. Uh, they have the ability for you to submit your template to a temp- template library um, and other people can download it, but they get your, it's template by whoever. Um, so HubSpot, yeah. yes. WordPress, yes. Webflow, yes. Airtable is doing this really well. I mentioned them. Um, they have Airtable Universe, which I have a PRM template inside of the Airtable Universe that anyone can download for free. Um, mm. But I think uh, other tech companies that, that don't feel like they have this use case. A good example is we were working with Smile Software. Shout out to Stacy, who was over there. She's no longer there, but they had a partner program that was kind of struggling to get any traction. Uh, our recommendation was to implement this strategy. And we looked into what they were, what they were, you know, what the product is. And it's a very simple product. Um, it... Uh, basically capture snippets of anything you type on your browser. They, on they your, run, they own text expander, right? Text expander. Exactly. I, it's one of PDF my favorite tools of all time. Uh, so shout out to text expander and smile. You know, 
out of like three things, I was telling one of my team members, I'm like, here's text expander. I go, if this ever stops working, you're going to crawl up into the corner and cry. And they're like, I don't know what you're talking about, Jeremy. And then one day they're like, it's not working. What, what do I do? I go, don't worry. And we just had to update it. But yeah, it is one of the best tools out there, hands down. So keep exactly. going. Yeah. But the thing about it is you, you think about that tool and then you think about the strategy that we just mentioned about templates and you're like, how would I do that? And so what we came up with was a partner sourced um, uh, snippets uh, library of the favorite snippets from each partner. And they could submit different snippets, screenshots, but also what the snippet was and how they use it. And uh, they created this directory and they had not, and that wasn't just for agencies. They, they also invited some top teams like Asana, I think submitted their favorite snippets. Like, it worked out really well yeah. and it brought- I have to check it out. People are always, I'm, I'm actually, I tell every single one of our clients that they should get a text expander. And they're like, and so I'm gonna have to check that out. <laughs> so yeah, so the, the point is you just have to get a little creative and you can do yeah. stuff like this. Um, but it gives your partner manager tons of ammunition and ammunition in the sense of like, if I need to call up Jeremy and I've never talked to Jeremy or maybe I haven't talked to him in, in six months and the last time I talked to him, I was just asking him for leads and he hung up on me or whatever, <laughs> or ignored me. Um, and I need to get back in touch with Jeremy. Well, what, what ammunition do I have as a partner manager? I have my incentives. I'm going to offer you commission for stuff in the future. That's not going to be valuable for no. you. Um, so I need something to come to you with. Well, this and it's way more valuable. Marketing, it's yeah. it's ammunition. For, like for someone's like, I'll pay you $2 for the year for a user. Like, who cares? You know what I mean? Yeah. And agencies can do the same thing. I know where we kind of just focused on tech there for, for a little while, but agencies, you can do the exact same thing. I have agencies that are bringing their tech partners in on a month or a weekly segment where they'll interview a top tool and find out all about it. Uh, they bring their tech partners in for lunch and learns. They invite their team and bring these, uh, these companies in to teach their team how to do something with their tool or what it is if they're not a current partner. Uh, and you can bring these partners into your blog as well. Many of these content teams at these big companies will do guest posts. So if you give them really strict criteria on what you will allow on your website, see if they'll commit a guest post. And then, of course, if you have a, a podcast, we have agencies that we've made introductions to to get our partner managers and our partner team, CEOs and our partner teams onto their podcast. And sometimes it's also turned into sponsorship opportunities for them. Uh, but the main one that I really like that takes a little bit more work is to create a course with your potential tech partner. So if I'm an agency, I'm thinking I need leads around a service that I offer. One of the best ways to generate leads is to create a valuable course on how to set up this marketing funnel that drives whatever or yeah. build a Shopify store, but connect it with reviews and all the chat stuff and cart stuff that you need. It's eight classes, but this is where the partnership strategy comes in. Each one of those classes focuses on one part of the funnel. And in each one of those parts of the funnel, there is a tech company that optimizes or is required to support that aspect, right? Come up with your eight classes, list out a few different companies that you'd be willing to highlight as the preferred tech vendor for each one of those classes. Go to each one of them, top to bottom, call them up, email them and say, hey, I'm creating a course where expect this much attendance and it's gonna be recurring and ephemeral or not ephemeral, it's gonna be uh, evergreen. So you're going to get a ton of business from this or a ton of leads, at least a lot of uh, notoriety um, from this. And uh, we're going to publish in three months. And we're looking for one tech company to be the feature in this class. Your tool can solve for it. We think that it would be great. But what I need from you is the promise that you will include my course in your user onboarding journey as a recommendation. So if I'm a chat tool, I can talk all day about my tool and how it's used, but it's hard for me as the chat tool to talk full funnel. But if I can send them to your course, Jeremy, where you talk full funnel on how to implement everything else around chat to make chat successful, well, as a chat tool, I want to send people to that course, especially 
if you only talk about my solution in that one class in the middle of the course. So do that. Now you have eight different teams, partner teams and tech companies that have agreed to send traffic in some way or another to your course. On top of that, you can even ask for sponsorship dollars. If it's a really valuable course and you're going to send a lot of people to it, ask them to pay to play. I love it. That's amazing. Thanks yeah. for sharing that, Alex. That, I mean, this is really next level stuff that, that any company can do. It takes a little bit of thought. It takes a little bit of time, but the benefits are like, it's a one plus one equals 10 scenario. So it, and what I love about partnerships, it's not like, okay, they become a client. It's is forever, right? So they're always getting new clients. They're always going to be referring. So when you get a, a great relationship with a partner, this lasts for a long time. So there is, you know, work on the front end to develop any relationship, but the benefits are huge, in my opinion. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, first of all, I want to point people towards partnerhub.app. They can go check that out. Um, I want to point people toward partnerprograms.io and check out what they're doing. I want to pause for a second and go to, so I'm on the partnerhub.app and I'm on the partners tab. So I'd love to talk through, because people geek out on tools and software and tech, whether they're a tech company or an agency, and I'm looking at some of these solutions and I just want to mention a few, and I don't know if there's any other cool ones, because I'm on the first page where I see um, Ally, Smith, Linworks, um, Ampla. What are some cool ones that um, maybe I'm not seeing because I am uh, only on the first page here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. There's a number of pages, and obviously it grows each day. But for the time being, we are going to make our users uh, on the tech side visible on the front end in case agencies want a peek of what's inside Partner Hub. But yeah, I mean, some of these companies have really awesome growing partner programs, and they are all vetted. So we don't allow a company that doesn't have a partnership offer to come into Partner Hub. So when you're in Partner Hub, you only see vetted tech companies that have both a great product and something that is super valuable for agencies to get into. So you open up some of these programs. I'll give a shout out to one of my favorite tools, User Centrics. Hmm. And they have three live offers. One of them is an agency highlight in their blog that gets hundreds of thousands of visits a month. Hmm. And all you have to do is deploy this program and accept the offer. And as long as you qualify, it shows you who qualifies. Agencies of all size, anybody can be included in this and you can accept that offer. Uh, so, you know, check all these companies out. The ones that have a green flashing outline are the ones that have live offers. Like Jet Rails had a good one beyond their podcast. Look at that. So, in any open source e commerce agency, can be on their podcast or welcome guest posts. So you can submit a guest post as long as it's related to this stuff here. So check all that stuff out, awesome. app.partnerhub.app. If you're a digital agency, you get in free. You don't have to be vetted or approved. If you're a tech company, of course, like I mentioned, we're going to vet you. We're going to make sure that you have everything uh, that we require in order to yeah. be in there. Some of you may get denied, but um, <laughs> that just means you need to go back to the drawing board and, and get more stuff done. Alex, first of all, I want to be the first one to thank you. And people, check out his websites. And I want to just, for tech companies, where should we point people towards specifically? And then agencies, where should we point people towards specifically on your websites? Yeah, I mean, uh, partnerhub.app has uh, the information on Partner Hub. Um, if you go to community.partnerprograms.io as a digital agency, you can apply to join the community. That's where we service offers. We have workshops weekly. We have a whole bunch of courses on how to set up new services on top of tech. And then on the tech side, you go to collective.partnerprograms.io. And that is the tech community where same kind of thing, weekly trainings, bunch of recorded coursework uh, and different, uh, different stuff to get involved in. Awesome. Everyone go to partnerhub.app and check everything out. And Alex, thanks so much. Thanks, Jeremy. 
what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.